Open your Bibles to uh, the book of Matthew, and it's, it's cool how God guides, as we're getting into different things, and uh, I, I appreciate this ministry that uh, is helping people be trained in the Word of God and to make a difference, and that, I, I, that's the whole thing that I've labeled this. To be honest, a week ago, I did not have this series on my mind. And I, the week ago, I had a lot of things that changed on my mind, just like a lot of you. And I've had a lot of people that have come to me and say, you know what, all this stuff that has happened in America has really shook me up. Can I say to that, amen, praise God? We would have been shook up a long time ago. Maybe some of this would not have happened. I'm not sitting here trying to blame us, but at the same time, I'm thinking we need to blame ourselves. My wife was sitting there, and we were worked up, and I'm just like all of you, and I'm, oh, and she said, you know the verse that I can't get out of my mind? I said, what's that? She said, doesn't Second Chronicles seven fourteen say, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and then will I heal their land? But doesn't it say, if my people, she says, why is everybody on Facebook blasting the White House and blasting the government and blasting Everybody under the sun, when God said the healing that comes to America has to start right here. It's got to start with us. And I I promise you, if we study the Bible and we get back to the Bible, we literally get back to what God said, and not just how we feel or how we think or the emotions that we've been built up in these things. Have you noticed that God always used his people? And I'm going to point out a couple of things. Jonah, Gideon, Moses, Daniel, Elijah, Elisha, everything... God always used the minority to change the majority. Notice that. Notice every time there was people, a nation, turned their eyes back to God, it did not come from a movement as much as it did come from a man or a woman of God. But we've given up. We have already thrown in the white flag. And you said, well, shouldn't we? The Bible says these things must come to pass. Just because the world's going to do what they're going to do does not change the mission we have. It should not change us. Where in the world does the Bible ever say, and when you see these things come to pass, throw in the white flag, it's over, folks. No, it never says that. Why are we acting like that? Why have we gotten to this? It's not going to change because of a vote. It's not going to change who's next in leadership. If you say that's how it happens, then show me in the Bible where it ever worked that way. It never has worked that way before. It always came from us. Read through these stories. David ran to Goliath by himself. You talk about the nation not even following God. The warriors didn't even follow God. But Daniel did. You, You talk about... People like Elijah that stood before the prophets of Baal and just poured out his heart, praying on his knees. Let me, let me say something with all love, and I'm, I'm just talking to you guys because we're all being honest. We've all gotten to the point where we're just shocked and we're stunned. How in the world could we have more people standing around church last Sunday complaining about what happened in America than we did at the altar when it came time to pray? But we're going to blame Everybody in the White House? If we did as much talking on our knees as we did on Facebook and in the hallways, we, we would have the nation we started with. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm tired of blaming the wrong people. You know a big problem with Christians? We emphasize more about what we are not doing rather than what we are doing. Think about it. I don't smoke marijuana. I'm not gay. I, I don't kill babies. I, I don't, I don't, I don't. Show me in the Bible where God says your difference comes by what you're not. You are a child of God. You are light. You are salt. You are different. And here we, we, we sit there and say, I'm tired. I hate. I dislike. I this. And God said, why don't you stop doing that and show them what is different? Show them what stands out. Show them what makes you a child of God. Show them. Instead of asking them and pointing out what they're doing wrong, I just want to point out and ask you, what are you doing right? Those in the Bible say that righteousness exalteth a nation. 
I'm, I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you guys. We, we, we quickly adapt and jump on board with whatever the world is doing. And I'm not talking about when I say being different or what the difference is in our life. And I'm not talking about styles because that's what a lot of people run to. It's not about whether you wear a fat tie or a skinny tie. If you roll your pant leg or you keep your shirt untucked or tucked in and all these things that we sit there and talk about, well, that's the way of the world. God defines what we should live like and look differently. So this is what I want to do. Rather than us just being all upset about what the world is doing, I want to sit at the feet of Jesus and I want him to say, this is what I want from you. I can't change the world without him. But I tell you what I can do. I can change me. I can be the me that I need to be. And I, and I, can, I can preach and I can teach and I can lead my family and I can do those things. So what we need to do is we run to the feet of Jesus. We listen to his teaching. We remind ourselves of who we are, whose we are. Here in Matthew chapter 7, I'm going to do something odd because in Matthew 7, what I was doing... So I was going to use this as my launch verse. Because Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 6, and Matthew chapter 7 lays out the Sermon on the Mount. and starts with the Beatitudes. And it is, it is one of the most powerful... No, let me just say, I'll just downplay Jesus. It was the most powerful preaching ever existed because it came from Jesus. Every word mattered. Every point mattered. Everything he said held significance. And I got into this, and I promise, just, just so you guys know, you're not going to be able to write down points this morning because I, I, I don't have multiple points because I never got that far. I got into this verse, which was my introduction, and, and, and the Lord just held me right there, and I could not get away. So next week, we'll start the points, but right now, I just need to lay this out. He begins, not don't turn there, but he begins Matthew 5, verse 1, and he sees the multitude, and and, and he went up into a mountain. When he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying. And then, then we have the message. Then we jump to where we're at in Matthew chapter 7. And we get to the end. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house, it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. And for he taught them as one having the authority, and not as the scribes. Let's pray. Father, as we come before you, we just pray that you will bless the time that we have. But I'm asking, Lord, that you will fill our hearts and minds. Lord, that you'll help us to get back to the things that matter and back to the things that change us. Lord, as you sat before them and they were filled, every one of them, all around them were these Pharisees and these hypocrites and these do-gooders and these people that followed the law. But in their hearts, they were so far from you. You pulled out and you sat them down to teach them what the difference was in their life. Lord, if we're going to make the difference, we've got to understand what the difference is in us. Lord, I pray that you will help us to study the opening of this, to understand, Lord, that we as Christians must be established on the rock if we're ever going to stand. We pray this in your name. Amen. I, I want to go back to verse 24 in chapter 7. And I want, I want you to underline something as we get to this. I want you to circle it. You need to get this part because I promise you, the reason we're having the problems that we're having is because of chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them. He said, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and does them. Thank God we're in church today. Bible's open. 
hearing the word of God, praising God. But I promise you this, it is not going to make a difference just knowing the truth. Because the churches are filled with people that know. The Bible makes it very clear. It's about living it, not just knowing it. It's about knowing what is right and living what is right. It's not just about having a head knowledge, but living it out. And chapter 5, when we read that, and I know that you guys know this, he's preaching the Beatitudes and he goes, Blessed is the man, blessed is the man. If you look up that word blessed, it means happy. And God was telling all these people, fulfilled, happy, satisfied will the people that listen to my word and do them. The key was simply this. You're going to have to walk out of here and do what I'm telling you to do. We're, we're ineffective if the Bible says to be holy for I am holy, but we live unholy lives and we expect God to bless. This illustration is powerful. I, I love the fact that Jesus constantly, I, I love coming up here and setting out visuals. You know why? When, when you study Jesus as the master teacher, Jesus could hardly ever taught without showing a visual. He was a very object lesson oriented preacher when he preached. Every time he had to pull out the fig leaves or the, the, the sower, the reaper, all those things. He was constantly pointing or illustrating something. And right here he gives another illustration. Chapter 7 verse 24. Whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon the rock. The house was a dwelling or a home or his family. And represented what he worked for, what he did, what he strived for in life. He said, I'm going to explain it like this. The things that matter most in life better be built on the rock or they will not last. Upon his teaching, upon his ways, upon his word. Notice verse 25 and it says, And the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house. Here's the thing that we have to understand. And just so you guys know. The storms are going to come. The storms are already coming. And and this morning I had um, somebody from the church that walked up to me and said, have you read the paper this past week? And I said, I'm not sure which part of it or what you're talking about. And I I probably haven't read it. And they said, where all these um, denominations got together and they voted, they were going to accept and start practicing what the nation is accepting and practicing. And I said, well, and they were naming off, and I I don't know the details and all this. Here's the thing. Let me ask you as a family, as a church, as a Christian, when the world starts piling in and blowing in and the opposition starts coming in, and the Bible says that the rains fell, the wind blew, the water rose up about them. Everywhere they looked, the opposition was there. What's going to happen to you? Are you going to buckle? Are you going to fall? Are you going to fail? It's not on the rock and the kids come up to you and say, well, I don't, I don't know. Maybe this is okay. Maybe there's nothing wrong with that. Maybe I'm wrong. But see, see, the thing is, when you establish everything on the rock, the rock never moves. The rock doesn't fail. The storms can come and the winds can blow and the water can rise up, but it doesn't affect the rock because the rock is solid. We're losing all around us because we have families building their lives upon opinions and this is the way I feel. And recently I talked to a Christian that loves God and I asked him and I said, where are you getting all this from? They said, I I don't know where it's in the Bible, but that's how I feel. That garbage has got to go. We don't live that way. We live by every word of God. Every jot, every tittle, every line has a purpose. Get back to it. I I love tradition and I love uh, opinions and all these things that we all have. But I tell you, this is what matters. This is what's going to shake us and build us. But the Bible says, and it beat upon the house. It's not going to be easy. Just think about that. The, the, The Bible isn't just saying, and the wind blew and it got a little rough. It says that it beat upon that house. Stuff is going to happen that's going to beat upon your marriage. You're sitting there going, I know we shouldn't get divorced, and I know this isn't right, but I tell you, honey, 
this isn't right. And I, every, everywhere I look, as the rains are coming up, as the wind's blowing, man, this isn't easy. And one by one, Christian families are faltering and they're failing and they're like, what happened? And you say, I don't understand. We were good for so long. You're not going to feel it till the wind starts to blow. You're not going to fall until the, 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 the rain comes in, until they start making announcements and this is changing. As the world changes and you say, I will stand, all the good intentions don't matter. I want to know where are you built upon? What are you standing on? That's the only thing that matters. Because my rock is stronger than the storm. There's not a thing that the world can throw at me that is stronger than what I'm built upon. And I love verse 25 and how it says, and it fell not. Because it was founded. It was established. It was rooted. It, it, had, it had a foundation upon a rock. When the wind ceased, when the rains blew, when, all, when the announcements were made, there stood that Christian family that said, for me and my house, we're going to keep serving God because we are built upon the rock. You say, wait a minute, I know this, but my life's falling apart. I've gone through storms, I've done this, it's, it's, the world is falling apart. Let me ask you, why? Because God doesn't lie. You can't ever go back in scripture and show where it doesn't work. It's impossible for God to fail. God cannot go back on his word. God can never falter. God can never ever go back on what he said. Verse 26, and Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man that built his house upon the sand. And the problems came and the stress began to build up and the opposition pushed them over. I know it doesn't say that, but that's what it means by the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house. You think you're going to go through this world without stress? You think just because you walk through the door of the church and you sit with your family and you put your kids in Sunday school and you tell them right and wrong and you raise them that they're not going to go to school and come back and say, Mom and Dad, maybe you've been wrong. You don't think that's going to happen? You're crazy. Nowhere in the Bible does the Bible ever say, go to church and you'll never have to deal with problems. Actually, you go to church, you put a target on your back. That, that's just the way it is. You, you stand for righteousness and the devil's sitting there trying to go after the world. He's going to pick off the leaders. That's, that's just being a, a good warfare. That's, that's what that is. He's smart and he's good. Stand up and he'll try to take you out. That's what he does. But it bothers me. Because of these words that it describes at the end of this passage. And it says, great was the fall of it doesn't just say it said it just it fell hard you know you, give me i'll give you a visual i'll tell you if there are churches that are standing up today voting whether they're going to follow god or follow the world that is a great fall because at a time where they should be saying we're not going to bend because we're on jesus and the bible says what is right and wrong and i stand right here and when you're over here and you do your opinion and how you feel and everything else you're going to fall and i'll tell you great will be the fall do you know why I say it's great? Because how is the world going to know what is right if they can't see what is right by us? When Elijah showed up and they said, guys, guys, quit crying out to Baal. He was never going to do that. Okay, whatever. Hey, guys, my God is the only true God. All right, that sounds good. God, show them. Boom! And the fire came from from there. They ate up the rocks and the dust and the water and everything else. Then they turn around and they're like, what? I mean, it was, he didn't have to explain anymore. They saw the difference. Your little Facebook post isn't going to do nothing. I'm sorry. Well, I don't like it. I don't like it either. No, 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 no. Big deal. I'm not saying don't make a stand. But I tell you, if we can't keep our marriages together, then, then, then what's, why is our wrongs worse or better than their wrongs? Why is it that we'll preach against two straight or two normal, two same sex people? I know where I'm going with this. Two same sex people being married. But we'll walk into the church and we'll take two people that are not married, let them shack up in a house, and we're all okay with that. 
When in the world did we draw a line saying one was right and one was wrong? When did we turn our head here and then we sit there and scream this out? That's where we went wrong. Sin is sin and wrong is wrong. That's just the way it is. And you say you're just trying to beat us up. No, I promise you, if my people, it's all of us, will humble themselves, that's just saying, God, I've I've done wrong. I'm sorry. Turn from their wicked ways. See, we get off the rock when we get comfortable. When we stop doing the things he said to do. That, and I'm not explaining. He's blessed is the man that does these things. He said, what are the things he's saying to do? Chapter 5, verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Go all the way through. We're going to hit it. Because you know what? I, I, I want to be the difference. I, I, I want to be a shining light. I want to be salt in the earth. And the thing is, when we drift from God and we drift from church and we drift from living righteousness and we drift from praying... All of a sudden, you just built your life on the sand. And they're sitting there going, hey, babe, we, we don't go to church like we used to. And we're, we don't pray with the kids. And we, we don't turn off the TV when bad. And I tell you what, it's, it's not that bad. I promise you. Hey, we still have a home. And we play 104.9 in the car. And we listen to this. And we have two Bibles on our nightstand. And, and I, I have a What Would Jesus Do t-shirt. That's great till the wind comes. And all of a sudden, it's getting there and saying, honey, things are getting hard. Man, I, 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 I feel like we're falling apart. The reason is because you are falling apart. He said, but I am a Christian. A Christian built on what? A Christian built on what? And I know a, a lot of us would sit there and say, I'm on Jesus. But you know what? We've got to quit saying that. We've got to go back to the word and see what that looks like. The principle that the song was written, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. When it's not on the rock, the result will always be the following, and it had a great fall. Can I tell you this, because I love you guys as my church family? Just brace yourself for a minute, because this is the truth. It's going to get worse before it gets better. We were brought to court to pay taxes on our property, because they felt as if we had too much property that wasn't being used for what they thought it should be used for. And now that big chunk of grass on the side, we pay taxes. And I'm not complaining, because that's just the way it is. But let me tell you, that's just the beginning Churches are doing things today when it comes to the world that we've never had to do before. And they're not going to stop with that. See, look at, turn back. I want to give you a little glimpse. I want to show you why I'm doing this. Matthew 5.11, still Sermon on the Mount, still same message that this. He said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you. That word right there is to defame or taunt you. To ridicule you or call your names or think you're crazy. To say things that church is out of touch with reality. Or that that we don't listen to those portions of the Bible anymore. When they come to our kids in school and say, hey, that's old fashioned. And that's not the way it is. Or that's not popular. You guys are weird and disconnected. Blessed, happy as a man when this happens. But it doesn't stop there. And persecute you. It goes from verbal. Then they go after you to pursue you. It's not just a matter at this point to point out how you are different. They've now got to shut your mouth because that's the goal of the devil. Don't be shocked. As we stand up and say, this is righteous and this is right, the devil's going to be like, hey, 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 get in there, shut them down, stop them. That's not what I want. I'm the God of this world. That's not where we're going. Get that pastor to stop. Do you know what they did? When Jesus stood week after week and he preached the truth and he showed that he was different. They tried to revile, they they tried to scorn him and they caught him or tried to catch him. Try to get him to say things he shouldn't. The Pharisees were like, oh, master, can I say something? And they were doing that. And at the end of it, they were like, enough playing around. Judas, go betray him. He's going to die. Blessed is the man persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. We will be the odd ones out because now they're calling good evil and evil good. So now when we stand for righteousness, it's going to look like we're preaching hate. 
We will be the haters because we will preach truth. And as long as we're preaching truth, God's going to bless us, but we can't stop preaching truth. We will fall apart through this description of the storm unless we are firmly planted on the rock. Verse 12, rejoice and be exceeding glad. It's like, what? Wait a minute, those verses don't go with with what we just read. For great is your reward in heaven. Let me ask you, what are you living for? If it's for all of this, let's just go home. This is not what I'm living for. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. This life is but a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanisheth away. We are not here forever. Stop living like it. For so persecuted they, the prophets, which were before you. The reason why I say that is because when it's said in the great fall, there's going to be a lot more families falling if we don't get on the rock. And I'm not just saying that it's going to church. It's going to church, listening and doing what we read. It's not just talking about what is righteous. It's about being on the rock. The sand is when we sit there and we'll walk into a movie theater and we'll sit there and hear them say GD over and over and over again and we call it entertainment. No, it's not entertainment. It, it goes against God. That's what the sand is. It, it's breaking down the rock. That's what, it, that's what sand is. It's breaking down the rock. Now, I know you can't break it down, but that's what the world does. It tries to get us to water down what is right. Well, Pastor Tony, that's just entertainment. And God says, no, I call it sin. I could go over and over and over again with page and page of what he says. This is, this is right, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong. And we've gotten to the point where it's like, ah, that's what they used to preach, that's wrong. No, I'm telling you, just, just keep following that way and see how you're able to stand. I just want to quit pointing out what the world is doing wrong. I want to st- start living what is right. And I know by this, if you keep reading in those passages, guess what you come across? He said, now you are the salt of the earth. Now you are the light of the world. When you do these things. So Matthew chapter 5 verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, the disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them. This is how you are to be different.